Hey guys, welcome to the first solo game developers podcast. My name is Kai Ashford Heatherly from Naked Game Devs, and I am here with Hugh Millwood, the mastermind behind Warism. How's it going? So, Hugh, um, what got you started in game development? Oh man, that's a good question. I don't know. I feel like it was probably one of these like really crappy programs that you can make like really crappy games in. Yeah, that aren't really <laughs> games that you'll, no one will ever play. That it's basically like a level editor or something. Oh, Probably yeah. one of those. I'm gonna judge like I'm gonna say something and hopefully people don't judge me. But like game maker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not even not even that. Man, it, or like Warcraft three mods. God, I miss Warcraft yeah, three mods. Not, not, not even, not even that sophisticated, man. Some like crappy little software, probably. <laughs> and then I moved on to like Flash games, but I couldn't use, I couldn't like write action script. So I used to just copy code off the internet and then like try and meld that into something that I could turn into a game. Yeah. And they were they kept getting deleted off new grounds, man. And I was like, oh, one day, one day, <laughs> one day I'll make it. Skip. One day, man. <laughs> <laughs> So then you went straight yeah. into like like C C plus plus. You you skipped like the Unity phase, or did you go to uni and start studying software? Or oh, yeah, no, I got kicked out of college. And uh, that is so uh, was, okay. Was, we need tell I me. I was studying IT, man. First first year of college, man. I was like, I'm gonna go to go to college. I'm gonna finish uh, IT. I'm gonna specialize in programming. I'm gonna go to uni. I'm gonna learn programming like on a big way. And I'm gonna leave uni and I'm gonna start working on games and shit. Kicked out first year of college, man. And so, yeah, it was a disaster. But I was like, I'm still going to learn programming. Yeah. So I started learning from, like, YouTube tutorials and stuff. I learned, like, really sk- loose C++. But it wasn't, a, it wasn't a comprehensive education, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you went out on your own. You started solo devving. And what, what were you doing to, to keep alive? Were you freelancing or was it... Like just like working oh, at a man. bar, like how did you survive? Yeah, that a mix of all of the above, man. I, I, it, I was never doing game development seriously. I was sort of just messing around, and in the meantime, I was working um, in call centers, and I ended up quitting a call center job, and I tried to travel mm. permanently. That's... That, I obviously I ran out of money in the end, so <laughs> I, uh, I came back, started working in bars, and uh, yeah, and so, then I was working on the game on the side, like true game developer kind of yeah. like. From just screw uni, living like living life, and then building a game, and then finally actually seeing that dur- that's awesome. During all this time, then, what was the hardest thing uh, to achieve or maintain while you're trying to build like to build your game and develop? And I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it wasn't like there wasn't any like really difficult parts of it. I think that I can recall more than that. It was just a slog forever. Do you know what I mean? Like there's always there's always a grind. Hmm. with with solo game development when you haven't got a massive budget you can't like i think what a lot of people do in in certain studios like you'll, you'll focus on game programming or whatever your field is and then you'll hand it off to the team that does the marketing or the team that does the community management or whatever you don't do all of that sort of stuff but yeah doing all of the above from the bottom definitely is is a grind and i think that's probably the, the been the most work like i sent easily like a thousand emails probably to youtubers to twitch streamers all sorts of stuff when i first started out trying to get some videos and get some coverage and stuff for it, draw some people in. Yeah, but, I've, I've heard this a few times as well, like sending out videos to YouTubers. Did did it work? Did it yield anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's definitely worth doing. It's one of those things. It, I mean, for every 50 emails I sent, I'd get maybe five responses. Mm. And maybe three of those would result in videos or something tangible that, that was worth the effort. But I mean... You could send one video and someone who's actually got a decent following does a video of the game. And then it's worth all of the emails that you sent in the first place. Do you know what I mean? So it, it sort of, it varies. But yeah, I don't know. There's probably ways to make the emails more efficient and to, to make them more uh, more worthy of a response. Like you don't want to send something generic that isn't personalized to the person you're sending it to. It's just like, hello, I am a game developer, blah, blah, <laughs> blah you know. <laughs> want to make it worth on replying, but... You, you never know with half of them because they never respond. So you won't know yeah. why they were like, fuck you. You don't even know if they saw it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, that yeah. drives me nuts. It's like, what did I do <laughs> wrong? What did you not like about what I made? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hate me? Yeah. It's like, did you even yeah. read my email? It's like, uh, 
Yeah. Imagine, imagine being bummed out about a thousand emails no one replied to. Just like in a thousand individual vendettas. I feel like at that point, like, do you, oh man, that would be like, how do you not give up? How do you just, how do you push through? Because you still get replies. So, so like, you know, you might, you might spend five hours sending emails out, like, like literally like working in an office, you know, just doing the, the sloggy grind. But then you get a couple of replies throughout the week, you know? Mm. So you're like, well, you still got, it's not like you're getting nothing back. Like you, I think even if you sent, even if, no matter what your game was, no matter what your email was, you're probably going to get at least one or two replies. I think I had one reply one time where a guy actually gave me some pointers on how I could structure the, the email a little better. Oh, that's pretty sort good. Of. Yeah, so I appreciated that. But I appreciate any feedback or any response, really, from anyone in regards to that sort of stuff. I've seen your Reddit. I've seen, like, how you, you respond to, like, <laughs> all your audience. It's actually, like, inspiring. And, and I think it's almost, like, necessary especially as a solo dev you you have to be there with every single one of your community members and and work with them through their hard times well yeah man well i didn't really expect ever anyone to ever play the game to be honest like i wasn't making it for anyone else i was just sort of messing around learning programming and building something to mess around in Hmm. and by the time it got to the point where people were playing it it was quite quite shocking really that anyone was even bothered playing it so if anyone had any questions, anyone wanted to talk about it, obviously I always have time to talk about that because it's something I spent so much time working on but didn't think anyone would be bothered with. Yeah. And I thought that feeling might fade away, but honestly it hasn't still. And anyone ever messages any of the boards on my game or posts on Reddit or posts on Steam or tw- tweets about it or whatever, like, you know, I'm always down to talk about it. You're I'm always, really... uh, I'm honored really that there's anyone that still cares about it. So, <laughs> like, you know, it's almost sold 20,000 copies now, so it's, That's so it's cool. getting... Yeah, I know it's unbelievable, man. Yeah, I um, I actually saw one of your posts the other day where you were talking about changing the price, and uh, what I wanted to know is like that that's a big move uh in business, like to to increase your price. Mm-hmm. That can really damage a brand and and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and your post on Reddit was really heartfelt, and it was really it meant like I could see where you're coming from. But like, how did that did that change anything from? from the the community did you get any negative like, like backlash from that none whatsoever that's exactly not what one, happens when you care <laughs> yeah no literally I, honestly i was so cynical going into like everything years and years ago and i just assumed i would be getting shitty comments all the time and i'd have to get used to it but i've had so few like nasty comments i've had like three or four steam reviews would have been like bad okay so you get this negative comment from from these people and uh how do you how did you tackle it did you you know well yeah it's i don't know man i mean to be honest most of the comments i've had that they i'd say they fall into maybe three categories so you get like straight up troll comments where there's nothing at all they it's just an insult or it's just something whatever i've had a handful of those but i mean just don't reply i mean if it's like racist or something like that then just just ban them don't even reply hmm. but you know if it's if it's just a generic troll comment whatever it's not even worth replying to but sometimes people people might come in with quite a troll angle but in what they're saying there's still actually valid criticism and they've been offended or upset by the fact that something isn't in the game or it doesn't function as well as it could or whatever yeah but that but it's still valid criticism from someone who's paid for the game do you hmm. know what i mean and and deserves to enjoy the game so I try and reply more to that than maybe the context in which they've said it. Sure. And try and address it, man. Like if, if someone's got an issue in my game and it's something that I can resolve, then that's the, that's the goal, man. I don't want anyone to not be able to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Especially if they've paid for it. They, they, they either need the, the thing fixed or they get the refund. Hmm. So but yeah, you do get, I think I did have one comment one time and the guy had like literally played like 10 minutes of it and said, there's no content in this game. <laughs> <laughs> like, <what the> hell? <laughs> is there any other kind of game on the horizon are you looking at building something else are you yeah man yeah i i mean to be honest i i don't think about it at all at the moment like because i i really want to focus on getting warsome out of early access hmm. but i do have a far off looming plan for a, a future game that i'm i'm really excited about the potential of because it's not going to be a tax based game. I was going to ask. So I'm actually going to enter the real world of game development and have access to like a real market and <laughs> to th- yeah, like I mean to 3D. Could, who knows? No way. Yeah, the real the real world, man. The real world. There'll be 
dimensions and shit. It's going to be wild. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to do a rehash, hopefully, of, of one of my older text based games, but do it in a more 3D sort of environment, I suppose. Yeah. But I don't have a lot of experience with that sort of stuff, so I'm probably going to, I don't know, I have to figure some stuff out yeah. in that regard. Well, you... I imagine it's going to be the toughest thing I've ever done, for sure, but I'm excited for it. So, like, all right. So, how do you manage all <laughs> just your text based game? Because I've never written. Uh, you know, in in straight C plus uh, plus. So, how do you manage your code? How do you manage your, your versions? How does it stay clean? <laughs> like, my code's messy. At yeah, no, I've... it's it's not good. I'm not gonna lie, it's not good. <laughs> you're, you're talking to the guy that learned C plus plus from YouTube tutorials. Do you know what I mean, like my 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 code is not good. It's not clean. <laughs> is but, there like no comments? Yeah, no, yeah, just shitty comments everywhere and. Stuff that I don't like. I, I'm looking through it sometimes, and I end up somewhere that, that I haven't seen in ages. That I was coding like four years ago, and I'm like, "What the fuck does this do?" <laughs> like, yes. And I'm having to like reverse engineer my code to try and like because I need to fix something or do something in this field in this yeah. area, and I'm like, "What the hell? How does this work?" And I have to like mess around with it and reverse engineer it to figure out how this shit works. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 not great, but. I, I've definitely learned more as I've been working on it. I think as you as you're developing games, you, you definitely upskill yourself throughout the development of any any project. Yeah, I mean you got it. You got to like survive. A game jam or something. That's yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I um, I think it's like a very obscure understanding about non-clean code from from uh like software developers to coming into this world because as as solo game developers, you've got to do everything. So if yeah. In a day, you might spend two hours marketing or going through Reddit and replying to comments, and and then you might have a bunch of emails you got to send, and then you still got to fit time in to develop, and then go out and make money to keep yourself alive. <laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah, that's a lot. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through what I call a debug round. It's a series of short, random questions. Mm. I'm going to ask you. You've just got to first thing that comes to your like head. Name. All like right, name. you ready? Let's go for it. All right, I'm ready. Is cereal soup? What is that? Is cereal like your cereal that you eat? Oh, it's it, cereal it, soup. Yeah. Fuck. Um. N- yes. Why? <laughs> Why is it soup? I, I don't know, man. I didn't think that far. I just. <laughs> just yes. Um, let's go with it. All right. Yeah. Let's, let... Just roll. Okay. Just roll. All right. What secret conspiracy would you like to start? Ooh. Um. The. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK, has four testicles. <laughs> Just, I love it. <laughs> All right, I'll see if I can get a hashtag starting. Um, <laughs> we'll what, get there, man. We'll get it. What's the most ridiculous fact you know? Oh, that Boris Johnson has four testicles. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Pass it on. T- tell everyone. Hashtag four testicles. <laughs> That's it, I'm making it. All right, in 40 years from now, what will be nostalgic? Ooh, um, breathing good air, probably. I don't know. No, that's no. how we go. To be, to be fair, we're, we're moving in the right way with environmental stuff, I suppose. Well, especially with the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every everything's everyone's indoors now, right? Um, yeah, man. Probably that. If animals could talk, which would be the rudest? Ooh. Maybe like sloths or something, man. They'd just be like, man, fuck off. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> just <laughs> and epically slow. <laughs> just fuck off. You leave me alone, dude. All right. In one sentence, how would you sum up the internet? Porn and other miscellaneous stuff. Yep. How many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? Ooh. Hmm. I don't know. Like 300? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good number. <laughs> just a good number, right? Yeah. That's just packing away. The <laughs> like, ah! Pumping them, squishing them up. Star Wars style going for the legs. Like. <laughs> yeah, they're wrapping them around. Oh. Just dead chickens everywhere, man. Four last questions. What's something people seem to misunderstand about you? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they understand or don't, to be honest. <laughs> uh, what's uh, What are you curious about right now? Hmm. When this fucking COVID shit's going to end, man. Yeah, that, that's That fair. I would love to know. Uh, what's something you failed at? College. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Uh, or, or last one, what is something you regretted saying in this podcast? Ooh. I don't know. I mean, are we allowed to swear? Because I feel like I've already... Yeah, why not? Like, I, that one. I haven't, like, said we, we can't. <laughs> nah, man, I, I got no regrets. That's awesome. So I... Swinging back into to warism and and going through it, um, I kind of want to know, um, really, like, what do you think the best marketing has been for you? Um, and, yeah, and what would you avoid? In the f- oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, best marketing. I mean, to be honest, I haven't had any, like, knockout amazing moments that have like changed everything but i found that it's 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 a sort of scattergun approach that has been the best one to be honest so so trying everything it's trial trial and error and obviously like you might spend some time posting on some forums and tweeting at some people and writing some articles on medium and sharing them around on reddit and whatever like loads of different things and some of those things might not work and some of them might but i found honestly just trial and error trying as much as possible and and iterating from it reading what other people are doing and that that's definitely the best way to do it and keep on top of things so what's, sure. what's something that you would just like tell everyone not to do you're like this is this is totally a failure yeah don't don't just spam links to your game in places where people don't want that yeah, quick it doesn't work self, don't spam <laughs> <laughs> you, you sometimes on, on, on like the game dev subreddit for example is is one yeah. that's that's game developers that's not like customers do you know what i mean so you see a post and it's just a link to a game people are going to downvote it you might get banned mm. so i think that if you're going to post on something like reddit you want to read the rules of every subreddit get to know it and, and understand what sort of stuff that people want to see there and deliver that kind of content in, yeah. in a way that that's tasteful i suppose if it's regarding your game but yeah don't be a spammer basically so on that, like I, I've been looking at the gaming subreddit a lot, and I've realized the top subs, uh, the top yeah Reddit posts are usually ones of just like beautiful, um, yeah aesthetics, <laughs> like or yeah. some someone's yeah. giving something away for free, or uh, it's some sort of ridiculously impressive mechanic. Uh, how did you find? Did you find any success on that gaming subreddit being? I honestly haven't had any success on the actual like gaming subreddit, which is the biggest one. Yeah. Because to be honest, the best stuff that the good things on there are, are things like gifs and things like that. They do really well, mm. but you can't really make a gif out of uh, a text-based game. So I haven't really had any luck, and there's not going to like any still images. But that, that's an advantage of anyone who does have the ability to do sort of anything like that. Is if you can make some good gifs, some entertaining things, good content, like people people love that on those sort of subreddits. Yeah. I mean, look at the Goose Game, the Untitled Goose Game, like that's sold itself so yeah. well really hasn't it yeah because it's, it's so easy to to make gifs of and make memes of make videos of and stuff yeah same as shotgun sh- shotgun farmers that's like nuts in it when it look up on tiktok uh, if you ever go to tiktok, TikTok yeah go to tiktok go to go to hashtag hashtag unity uh unity 3d or uh what else did you have hashtag indie game and the top like six to 12 posts or whatever is all his game is shotgun farmers and his yeah yeah, and it's nuts right he's done so well uh just capitalizing on this um market but tiktok's a really good one if you you should uh, it would work really well for tech space as well all right i've got one more thing like it's called early early release uh all right you've been tasked to come up with an idea of a game that can be built in a weekend all right oh yeah now i'm I'm not gonna give you any boundaries it's just what would the game be how would it play it would probably play pretty badly if it was made in a weekend (laughs) (laughs) i I have no idea honestly nothing that like i don't know (laughs) i don't normally work within those restraints my brain is is not like a weekend you're like over the next like four years (laughs) Like, yeah, exactly. Like a, like what game jam sort of games, isn't it, man? Where they do that sort of yeah. speedy stuff. So impressed though with what people manage to do in those time periods. Oh, it's crazy! It's such a testament to the creativity of the game dev community. Like what people are able to achieve. Yeah. Do you reckon um, you could take? Do you reckon the once Warism goes full release, would that? Do you feel like that will be able to fund you in your uh, 
endeavors to make more games in the future i mean it is it's doing fine at the moment like to be honest and it's not even released yet but yeah i mean i'm always i feel like i'm probably gonna try and continually work on it Hmm. as long as i can even once it's released so maybe if it's like a once in a month update or something like that keep in touch with it like because i I don't know, man. It still keeps people there. Do you know what I mean? It still still keeps it relevant. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, man. I, I I don't see any reason why it wouldn't sort of stay somewhat alive yeah. for a, a fair while. I mean, it's been going for... Since it's been on Steam, I think 2017, there's not been really many days where it hasn't sold a handful of copies. That's and, awesome. And it seems to be getting a bit more over time. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's doing better this year than it did last year and stuff. So, it's, it's, it's awesome to see. It's That's hard. so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. I feel, I feel all confident with it, you know, than I did before. Yeah. Dude, I love it, man. Thank you so much for, for being on this uh, this podcast, especially the first one. Uh, it's always a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Thanks for having me. Bye.